tonight on EKB Evening News at 6. It will be eight more days before the Republican primary for governor is finished. Good evening. I'm Gary Sloan. And I'm Jill Fraley Dotson. Cindy is off tonight. Even though the votes are cast and counted, there still remains some doubt about one of Tuesday's top races. Republican gubernatorial candidates Matt Bevan and James Comer ended election night in a dead heat with Bevan apparently eking out a win by an 83 vote margin. Bevan has declared victory, but Comer has not yet conceded the race, saying he owes it to his supporters to seek a re-canvas. A re-canvas is not the same as a recount. A re-canvas merely compares precinct total sheets and makes sure they are the same as the numbers entered into the state system. The re-canvas will take place a week from tomorrow. And despite finishing a distant fourth in the Republican race for governor, Pike County's Will T. Scott took the Tuesday's results in stride. Scott says he does not view the outcome as a defeat. I, I didn't lose. You know, I, I, I didn't win that race, but I didn't lose, and Kentucky didn't lose. Whatever the Lord had set for me to do in this race, it is done. Even if it's just helping Matt or, or some of my other colleagues and maybe giving them ideas on... on how we can manage the problems. I had a ball out there with Kentucky. I had a ball with the Kentuckians I spent time with, and I loved it, just like I love all races. And, and I'll be in there fighting for Kentucky, so no, no, I won. Scott stepped down from his post as Supreme Court Justice to run for governor. He gave no indication of his future plans Tuesday night. During a special meeting of the Pine County Fiscal Court today, magistrates voted to continue a garbage disposal agreement with the city of Pikeville. City and county leaders have been working out the details of a new 10-year contract for the past few months. According to Deputy Judge Executive Brian Morris, both sides benefit from the agreement. What this is is, is the, the county gives the city usage to the landfill for a reduced rate and the city takes the county's leachate and dispose of it. it it's just a win-win for city and county both to unite and to get this done and I was thrilled that it got done today. The Pikeville City Commission is also expected to approve the agreement during a special meeting on Friday. A Logan County man pleaded guilty yesterday to a federal charge of mailing threatening letters to public officials. 32-year-old Kelly Gerald Crosby pleaded guilty in U.S. District Court in Charleston Tuesday. Crosby was incarcerated in a southwestern regional jail in September when he sent a letter to the Logan County Courthouse threatening to, quote, kill, rape, and make suffer, end quote, those he named in the letter. Crosby will be sentenced August 19th. He faces a maximum sentence of five years. A Williamson man is facing federal weapons charges after a grand jury proceeding yesterday. 24-year-old Lance L. Ward was indicted on two counts for allegedly being in possession of a loaded handgun on April 17th and April 21st, despite being convicted of a domestic violence charge in September of 2011. Ward also faces state charges from April 21st, including domestic battery, wanton endangerment, discharging a weapon within 500 feet of a dwelling, possession of stolen property, and prohibited person with a firearm. He is currently being held in the Southwestern Regional Jail on those charges under a $5,000 bond. Coming up, Kentucky Governor Steve Brashear is boasting about the state's latest economic indicators. And if you're in the market for a new cat or kitten, you can now do so without spending a lot of money. We'll tell you why in two minutes. Appalachian SPCA and the Pike County Deputy Judge Executive Brian Morris have partnered together in the efforts to find cats and kittens homes. The Pike County Animal Shelter is maxed out when it comes to cats and an anonymous donor has now sponsored all the cats and kittens, meaning the animal shelter's cat adoptions, first shots and spaying or neutering will be free. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele went to the animal shelter to get their thoughts and brings us the details. 
The Pike County Animal Shelter has rich capacity when it comes to cats. In order to save the lives of these animals and prevent euthanization, the county has found an anonymous donor that will pay the adoption fee for cats and kittens until the overpopulation at the shelter is under control. Pike County Deputy Judge Executive Brian Morris says this is something that needed to be taken care of quickly. I received a call yesterday from the animal shelter saying that the cat population was overpopulated. And, uh, you know, the county had to act in that quick. Uh, we reached out and touched base with a couple of local companies. They've offered to, to chip in uh, adoption fees so we could offer free adoption until the population goes down. Cats and kittens will have their first shots, and those adopting a cat or kitten will have a week to make an appointment for its spay or neuter. Animal Control Officer for the Pike County Animal Shelter, Jason Burke, says it's important to spay or neuter your animals in order to prevent situations like this. It's very important to get them spayed and neutered because it overcrowds us, and once we get overcrowded, if we can't find homes for them or fosters, and then some, then we have to make room, and then we will have to put some to sleep. And we really don't want to do that. Morris adds that he is unhappy any time the Pike County Animal Shelter has to euthanize an animal. I would love to have a no-kill shelter. I'm working towards a no-kill shelter euthanizing would have to absolutely be the last option. Burke says the shelter has assistance available for low-income residents who would like to adopt a pet but don't think they can afford it. We've got a program here that's through the Humane Society uh, that helps out people that's like on uh, fixed income or just don't have a lot of money coming in. Uh, it pays half on the spay and neuter. It's a piece of paper. You come down to the Pike County Animal Shelter. Uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4 and we'll give it to you and you just fill it out, send it to Humane Society and they'll help pay half on the spay and neuter. For now, all cat adoptions are free until the overpopulation is under control. The shelter has cats and kittens in all colors. Shelter hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 10 until 4. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. The summer tourism season will soon be in full swing and thousands of visitors are expected to travel to Pike County to visit historic sites related to the Hatfield and McCoy feud. In anticipation of the tourism traffic, the Pike County Fiscal Court today voted to rename Route 319 the Randall McCoy Way and Route 292 the Rosanna McCoy Way. Also, Pike County tourism officials tell us they are thrilled to be able to draw more attention to the Hardy community. Today, there was a proclamation went out to rename 319 Randall McCoy Trail and Route 292 to name it uh, Rosanna McCoy Trail. Randall was raised in Pike County and, of course, lived in Hardy area. And, of course, Rosanna had a child, and that child is buried out at Aunt Betty's home on 292. So many footprints she made making her way back to that baby's grave. We wanted to make sure that piece of history was told. And to be able to tell it is to be able to shine a light on it. And you can't do any better with signage. Tackett said the History Channel's Hatfield and McCoy's miniseries that first aired in May 2012 is still bringing thousands of visitors to Pike County every year. Kentucky officials are pointing to April as a strong month for economic development and the state budget. A dozen companies announced location or expansion projects which are expected to create nearly 600 new jobs and $143 million in new investments. Governor Steve Bashir says this is great for Kentucky's economy, especially with the coal industry continuing to struggle. What that indicates to us is that our economy is moving again and it's growing again. Now, that's not happening everywhere, and obviously eastern Kentucky is a place that is not uh, uh, experiencing th the kind of growth that other parts of the state are because of the severe and quick downturn in our coal industry. Uh, we're obviously going to keep fighting uh, to support our coal industry, and we're working very hard to, to make sure that we preserve as many of our coal jobs as possible. April's general fund receipts set an all-time high for a month, surpassing the $1 billion mark for the first time ever. Collections grew 23.3 percent compared to April of last year, an increase of $193.5 million. Total revenues for the month were over $1 billion compared to $830 million received during April of last year. Receipts have now grown 6.2 percent for the first 10 months of fiscal year 2015. 
Kentucky Highway officials are asking for the public's help tonight in helping finding the person or persons responsible for removing bark from 18 elm trees in the state right-of-way along Route 550 in Knott County. Elm bark can be profitable to those selling it to pharmaceutical manufacturers. However, removing the bark from state-owned trees is a crime. Furthermore, whoever is responsible for the Knott County stripping did it in a way that will kill the trees. We have a situation where some folks have been stripping the bark off elm trees in Knott County. We've noticed it particularly on Route 550 East. Um, apparently, I don't know what, what they're using to do it, but according to our maintenance folks in Knott County, they're not doing it in such a way that the trees aren't damaged. What's happening is not only are they trespassing on state right of way, which is not legal, but they're also stripping the bark in, from the bottom up in such a way that it will kill the trees. And probably by this time next year, we'll have dead trees falling over on the shoulder of the road and into the roadway in some cases. And it'll cost us several thousand dollars to cut them up and haul them off and get rid of them, just the ones that we've seen so far. The Department of Highways is, seeking, is asking anyone with information about the stripping to contact the Kentucky State Police. Estimates are that it will cost between four and five thousand dollars to remove the trees. Coming up, the regional baseball and softball tournaments will come into focus over the next couple of days. Andrew Joyce will be in with the details. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be here with our midweek forecast. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, it was certainly a nice way to start our midweek as we look forward to the weekend. Lots of people making plans for the Memorial Day holiday. Of course, that long holiday weekend just a couple of days away. What will the weather hold? We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. First, the Doppler radar across the region this evening showing, well, nothing just yet, but those showers are beginning to creep into central parts of Kentucky. I can show you that with the satellite and radar composite. You'll see the cloud cover increasing from the west to the east. The showers moving in toward uh, Cincinnati and Bowling Green, Evansville, and this will continue to move off to the east as well. So yes, before this night is out, we will see some rain across eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, and western West Virginia. Again, I'm going to show you, take you and uh, show you some of the regional weather cams across the region from the Kentucky Transportation Department. Cloud cover galore in Lexington, 69 degrees, much cooler thanks to the cloud cover. But once you hit the Mountain Parkway heading east near Slade, 71 degrees. And in Pikeville, just a few of those higher level clouds making their way through the region. Current temperature in Pikeville, 74 degrees. Elsewhere across the region, 78 in Williamson, 72 in Inez, 74 in Prestonsburg, 74 in Paintsville, 70 in Dorton, and 76 the current temperature in Whitesburg. The official high today went down in the record books at the National Weather Service at 73 degrees. The low of 49, which is close to where we should be this time of the year. No rain today, but for the month, still two inches or so short of where we should be this time of the year. That will be changing though. We will get some rain, as I mentioned, overnight tonight and during the day tomorrow as this storm system continues to make its way toward the region. Now here's how the computer forecasting models play things out overnight tonight. You'll see the rain continuing to move east. Another little piece of energy will move in from the northeast or from the northwest, I should say, across the region tomorrow, keeping the rain chance in the forecast. Only about a 30, 40 percent chance of rain for tomorrow. But of course, the big story will be the cooler temperatures. With the cloud cover and the chance of rain in the forecast, some of us may not break out of the mid and upper 60s for high temperatures during the day tomorrow. So some big changes definitely on the way when we talk about the temperatures. As far as the pollen count goes, sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville, 7.5 in the high category. Throughout uh, the day on Thursday and Friday, by Saturday we are back into the nearing, at least, the extreme category. Thursday, that 30% chance of rain, 68 degrees after a morning low tomorrow morning of 55. 43 Friday morning and warming to 75 by Friday afternoon, near 80 on Saturday. And then you see that 30% chance of rain back in the forecast 
for Sunday into Monday temperatures in the low to mid 80s. And you'll also notice right on cue an increase in humidity as well as we wrap up the long holiday weekend. We knew it was coming. Oh, of course. It's not going to not going to stay away too long. No. <laughs> well, we'll be back in with sports in just two minutes. Well, district action continues across the region. It does. We had champions crowned last night. More championships all heading to the regional tournaments next week. There has been plenty of baseball and softball action around the region and the bluegrass these past two days. The first round for both baseball and softball have wrapped up as of last night and the championship games continue tonight. Both teams that are playing in the district championships will advance to next week's 15th region tournament but Pride is on the line seeking a title. On the baseball diamonds in 57th district action, Johnson Central came out on top over Sheldon Clark 10-6 yesterday evening. Paintsville defeated McGuffin County 8-0, advancing to the title game where they will face crosstown rival Johnson Central tonight at 6.30 in Inez. And in 58th district baseball action, Allen Central facing the Bobcats of Betsy Lane at Drift Park. Go to the bottom of the fifth. Two runners on, Dylan Lawson up to bat. He'll slap this single to the left and bring in a run. Rebels go up on top, 6-1. Taylor Kane will come to the plate. A pass ball, and the Rebels slide under the tag for another run. Ball four, a pass ball, and another gimme run for Allen Central. Rebels up 8-1. Dustin Johnson up to bat. He'll hit, drive this one to left field, driving in two runs. The throw from left fielder went into out of play area, advancing one more runner for the Mercy Rule in five innings, 11-1. The Rebels advance to play Prestonsburg tonight at South Floyd for the 58th District Championship at 7.30. Allen Central 11-1 over Betsy Lane. The Rebels advance to the championship. They'll face uh, the winner of Prestonsburg and South Floyd from game two last night. The Black Hats are looking for their fifth straight district championship under Shane Simpkins. Starting pitchers in this one combined for 12 strikeouts through three innings. No hits allowed. Go to the top of the fourth. Black Hats at the plate. One runner on Jaron Hall with this shot past the diving first baseman, bringing in the first run of the game. Ryan Sloan goes to first to home to put the Black Hats on the board. Jordan Tucker at the plate with the soft line out right at the shortstop. That'll be, bring Jared Gerald to the plate. The right hander will slap this RBI single to right. That'll bring in another run. The Black Hats taking advantage of every opportunity they get. Gerald, the speedy runner, he'll attempt and steal second base. John Cooksey up to bat, an RBI single to score the runner, but Cooksey will be nailed at second, trying to get the extra base. Prestonsburg wins it 6-0 over South Floyd. The Black Cats advance to place Allen Central in 58th District Championship action this evening at 7.30 at South Floyd. Complete radio coverage on Classic Rock 103 at 7.15. And it's championship night at the 59th District Baseball Tournament at Pikeville's Davis Park. The Panthers take on top seed Eastridge this evening at 7. Radio coverage on 93.1 WDHR. And in 60th District baseball play, Lawrence County defeated Phelps 16-1 Monday evening. Last night after a rain delay on Monday, Pike Central and Belfry resumed their game. Belfry comes out on top 7-1. The Hawks see their season end at 18-12. Belfry will face Lawrence County this evening at 7 at Pike Central. And in girls softball action around the region, the 57th District Tournament wrapped up first round play. Johnson Central blanked Paintsville 7-0. The Lady Tigers end their season with a 17-11 record. McGoffin County's Lady Hornets come out on top over Sheldon Clark 2-0. McGoffin County advances to play Johnson Central in the 57th District Softball Championship tomorrow evening at 7 in Inez. And in 58th District Softball, Betsy Lane's Lady Bobcats knocked off Allen Central 15-0. South Floyd came out on top over the Prestonsburg girls, 7-6. Betsy Lane faces South Floyd this evening at 6. 
for the district crown. And the 59th district wrapped up with a thrilling title game last night. The East Ridge ladies facing number one seed Pikeville. The Lady Panthers left 11 runners stranded and the Lady Warriors scored all of their runs on one hit, a walk, three errors and four wild pitches. East Ridge came out on top over the Panthers 4-1, to one, giving them the 59th softball crown. In 60th district tournament action, Lawrence County Mercy Phelps 16-0 and Pike Central came out on top over Belfry 10 to 4. Lawrence County will face Pike Central in the 60th District Softball Championship Thursday evening. And in breaking news from local boys basketball, the Phelps Hornets basketball program is looking for a new leader. Phelps head basketball coach Bobby Varney has resigned that position today. Varney had a record of 34 and 109 in five seasons leading the Hornets. And there you have it. Earlier this afternoon, Cash Daniel Pike Paintsville Jr. tweeted his commitment date via Twitter. He'll have his list narrowed down to his top four schools by the end of June and set his commitment date for August 13th. Lots of people looking forward to hearing where he will be headed. Love to see him end up playing at Commonwealth, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you, though? Yeah. You certainly would. All right, Andrew, thank you. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, Lathan, a possibility of some rain tonight? Rain showers returning during the overnight hours tonight and through some of the day tomorrow. 30% chance of rain, but temperatures will be the big story tomorrow. 68 degrees, that is the high temperature. Friday morning, we're talking low 40s before back in the 70s, Friday into Saturday. Mm, okay. All Hold right. Down. Very much yes. so. What's coming up tonight, Andrew? Uh, one of my favorites, Full Throttle Video with our friend Ted Meadows tonight at 7 on EKB TV. It's a great show. Make indeed. sure to stay with us. Well, that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News on and EKB TV on Facebook and on Twitter. Tonight, we leave you with a visit to the Towers Overlook at the Brakes Interstate Park. Good night and thanks for watching.